For our notes today, we're going to make sure that we update, first of all, update our table of contents. And then secondly, we're going to make Cornell notes that look like number three right there. And today's lesson is on Thomas Jefferson's Embargo Act. So I'll give you a little bit of time to get that uh, set up. Press pause while you complete it. And when you're ready to go, press play again. This is what our notes should look like. So make sure you do have them set up. Page 68. Make sure you put page 68 top right corner. We've been discussing the early republic. This is the time period where America finally is able to grow and prosper. And there's a lot of precedents being set up, meaning things that are happening, happening for the first time. We talked about Washington's presidency, and then we're going to be discussing Adams. But for today, we're going to continue with Thomas Jefferson. There should be some information you already know about Thomas Jefferson. I want you to press pause and think about what should you already know? What have we already learned about Thomas Jefferson before he became president and during his presidency? Press pause. Think about those things. Uh, type them out in the Ed Puzzle right now. See what you can come up with. All right. Type them out on the Ed Puzzle. And then when you're ready, press play again. These are some of the things we should have come up with already. He's the author of the Declaration of Independence. That means he's the one that defined unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that we're all born with these rights. He also became America's first Secretary of State under, Jeff, uh, under Washington's presidency. So he dealt with foreign affairs. During that time, uh, which he was part of the cabinet, the first cabinet created by Washington, he, alongside with Alexander Hamilton, formed political parties because of their disagreements. He was the leader of the Democratic Republican Party and Hamilton of the Federalists. And we should know what are those differences or those disagreements they had. The extent of the federal power. So should we have the power at the level of the states or should we have it at the level, the, uh, or should we have a strong federal government like Hamilton wanted? Uh, National Bank, for or against it, right? How should the nation develop economically? Jefferson believed we should keep focusing on agriculture while Hamilton thought in, uh, industries and factories are our future. So then, of course, we should have put our third president because he is the third president of the United States. And we should have discussed or at least listed there, I'm sorry, we should have listed the Louisiana Purchase. So originally, Thomas Jefferson wanted the port of New Orleans. And so when they reached out to France, France said, you know what, I'll sell the entire thing. Remember, France is still at war with Britain during this time. And selling this territory would give them money to be able to buy resources to fight against Britain. So France said, you know what, I won't just sell you the port of New Orleans. I'll sell you the entire Louisiana territory. And so we purchased it, like I mentioned, $15 million. It doubled the size of the United States. It gave us control of the Mississippi River as well. How does that affect future development of the United States? Well, one, it opens up the port of New Orleans for foreign markets. We're able to import and export with other countries. Two, control of the Mississippi River allows the United States to transport goods up and down a lot more efficiently. And finally, uh, all of this new land, this these grass grassy plains, all this new land has a very good fertile soil for growing crops. So America is able to farm and grow and expand to the west. So westward expansion as well. Now, what I want you guys to do next is to write a short constructed response answering that question, which is something I just went over right now. What are two ways that the Louisiana Purchase affected the future development of the United States? Remember, when you're answering these short constructed responses, you have to make sure, are they asking me for two answers, right? Or is it just one? So here we're asking for two. And the best way to do this, to answer these in complete sentences is by restating the question. So here you see the question, what are two ways the Louisiana Purchase affected the future development of the United States? You're going to start by typing out one way that the Louisiana Purchase affected the future development of the United States is that, and then you give me your answer. And then a second way is that, and then you give me your second answer. All right. So go ahead and get ready to answer that short constructive response. So what are some things you should have answered? 
we could have answered that having control of the port of New Orleans now allows us to import and export or trade with foreign countries, opening up to like foreign markets. You could have answered that we can transport goods faster and easier up and down the river, or that now we have all of this land for farming so the United States can develop economically uh, because of it. So now let's go ahead and write this down. Let's take our notes down. And once you're done, we're going to move on to learning about the last thing, the last most important thing under Thomas Jefferson's presidency. Meanwhile, as Jefferson is purchasing the Louisiana Territory, France and Britain are still fighting. They're continuing this war that they had back when Washington first became president. So Jefferson wants to honor and enforce the neutrality proclamations. He's trying not to get involved, but he's continuing commercial relations with both countries, meaning we're still trading with both countries. Britain and France are basically getting fed up that America is using both of them to make money, uh, and they want America to choose a side. So what Britain starts doing is Britain starts to block Make sure that you look at me and you do this. Britain starts to block American trading ships. So whenever uh, America is going to go trade with France or any other country, Britain blocks that trade. And so what this does, it, it disrupts U.S. trade. Think about that word disrupt in the classroom. I don't need you disrupting my classroom when I tell a student, right? That means when a student is disrupting, he is not allowing me to teach and you to learn. They're disrupting, not allowing. So when Britain disrupts our U.S. trade, they're not allowing us to trade with other countries. All right. So write this down. Disruption in trade. Britain blocks American trading ships. Write that down. Press pause. as, uh, And then when you're ready, press play again. This angers Thomas Jefferson because he's trying to stay neutral, right? And so what Jefferson does in response to the disruption in trade is he passes something called an Embargo Act. And the Embargo Act basically said it was super extreme. Jefferson said, you know what? We're just not trading with any foreign country, not just France and Britain, no foreign trade. He said, we're going to do things ourselves. We're going to, we're, we don't need to trade with any other country. This was extreme, guys. This was so extreme that it ends up damaging the United States because the New England region, which is also the Northern region, the New England region, their main economic activity, aside from factories and manufacturing, is the commercial shipping industry. They make money by shipping goods right? And so this affects the, the New England region. So later, Thomas Jefferson changes the law and says, okay, okay, my bad. How about we just not trade with France and Britain since they're the ones that are disrupting our trade? And that's what he does. The Embargo Act was an initial no trade, a ban with all foreign countries. And then they changed it to, we're just not trading with France and Britain. So go ahead and write this down, press pause so you can get it done, and then you can press play when you're ready to go. So how does the Embargo Act affect the United States? I gave you one way earlier how it negatively affected the United States. Let's check it out because it affected the United States by its different regions. The United States during this time is divided into three regions. The New England, which is we call the North, the West, and then the South. Well, the New England, there was because of the decline in the foreign trade, it affected the commercial shipping industry. And so the, that hurt the North. Now, the West, all the wheat and the corn, because they're mostly farmers there, the wheat and the corn prices dropped as supplies flooded the domestic market. So they have so many um, raw materials and they're getting sent to those markets in the ports and there's nobody to buy them, right? And when we say domestic, it's in the United States. And finally, the South planters suffered financial losses because surplus tobacco and cotton could not be exported. That means they have so much tobacco and cotton and they can't sell it to foreign markets, to other other countries. So this is a way that it affected, negatively affected the different regions within the United States. 
What do you think happened when America cannot get manufactured goods from Europe? So not only can we not export, we cannot import goods. Some of the main goods we're importing are manufactured goods, right? Yes, we have factories, we have industries, but we do not have all of those manufactured goods. So we have to sometimes get them from other foreign countries. So when we cannot do that, what ends up happening is we end up saying, well, you know what? We need those manufactured goods. We start to manufacture our own goods. This increases our manufacturing domestically. Remember domestic in the United States. So what ended up being a negative effect now has turned into a positive, positive effect in this aspect. There's an expansion of manufacturing. We start learning how to do our own goods. All right. So this was a positive impact in the United States when it came to the Embargo Act. There's negative and positive. What I want you to do next is I want you to draw this graphic organizer on your notes. Make sure that you put effects of the Embargo Act. Go ahead and press pause so you can get that done. So let me ask this first question. What effect does the blocking of the U.S. trading ships by Britain have on America? So what effect does blocking the U.S. trading ships have on us? Because they blocked us, Britain is disrupting our trade. We cannot trade with other countries, right? We, it's disrupting. It's not allowing us. So go ahead and write that down. Press pause. What does President Jefferson do in response to this disruption of trade? He gets upset. What does he do? What law does he help pass? The Embargo Act, which was a ban. Go ahead and write that down. A ban on all commercial trade, which later he changes it and says, you know what? We're just not going to trade with France and Britain since they're the ones disrupting our trade. Next question, how does the Embargo Act affect the United States? Remember, there are positive and negative effects. So the negative effect is there is a decline in foreign trade, meaning when I talk about trade, it's import and export. We cannot ex export our goods. We cannot sell our, our raw materials right to foreign countries, and we cannot purchase manufactured goods from foreign countries. So there's a decline in foreign trade. Finally, what positive effect does the Embargo Act have on the economic development of the United States? If we recall, economic is money. So how does this actually end up helping us financially in domestically in the United States? Well, there's an increase in domestic manufacturing. We couldn't get certain goods from Europe anymore and we needed them and wanted them. So we start to manufacture them ourselves, giving us an increase in domestic manufacturing. Go ahead and write that down. So let's take a look at this next question. I'm going to read it for you and then you're going to answer it. Read the passage and answer the question that follows. In the early 1800s, Great Britain was in a conflict with France. Both countries tried to prevent the United States from trading with the other country. As a result of British impressment of U.S. sailors, Congress passed the Embargo Act in 1807. This act closed U.S. ports to, to export and placed restrictions on British imports. And in 1809, Congress repealed, meaning canceled that one, and replaced it with the law that specifically prohibited trade with Great Britain and France. So it's basically explaining what the embargo acts were. So what was one effect of these actions on the United States? How did this affect the United States? A, the signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. B, international criticism of the Monroe Doctrine. C, the expansion of manufacturing. Or D, increased profits from international commerce. Go ahead and answer this question. We should have all answered C, the expansion of manufacturing. Why? We cannot get those goods from them anymore. We have to make them ourselves. The next question. Every region within the United States got affected by the Embargo Act. There it shows you that the West, all of their grains, such as wheat and corn, those prices for those grains dropped. It's cheaper because we have so many of them. And why do we have so many of them? Because we can't export them. So the prices drop. The South, 
planners suffered financial losses because they have a surplus like too much tobacco and cotton, these raw materials, and they can't export them. How did the Embargo Act affect the New England region, which is your north? Which sentence best completes this table? Is it F, prices for manufactured goods decreased? G, factories closed as workers returned to farms? H, a decline in foreign trade damaged the commercial shipping industry? Or J, fishing revenues decreased as a result of reduced demand? Go ahead and answer that. We should have all answered H. There was a decline in foreign trade. So because we couldn't buy and sell to other countries, guess what? Our commercial shipping industry cannot do their job. They can't. They have, they, they're basically out of a job, right? Because now they're being told, no, we're not shipping. We're not trading with other countries. And that was their job, the shipping industry. So that's how uh, it affected them. Alrighty, boys and girls, that concludes our Embargo Act lesson. So make sure that you complete and you watch this till the very end, and then you get ready for our next lesson, which you can find in Google Classroom.